Hey everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, just thought we'd hop on here. It's my new friend Gabby. And we met, I don't even know, just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And we share a lot in common around uh, maternal mental health and how we can support each other as women to young children. We're also here in San Cristobal de las Casas, Chiapas, mm -hmm. Mexico, which is how our paths converge. So we thought we'd chat yeah. live here <laughs> about world schooling and what brought us south of the border. Um, yeah, so I'll say that, but what would you like Yay. to share about yourself? <laughs> I'm so glad to be chatting with you today, Kara. Like, these are all my passions, and I think that as soon as we met, we both just, like, started in, and we could just tell that there was that spark, so it's really lovely to be, like, taking the time to have these conversations and to be here and to be doing this. And I'm Gabby, and I'm the mom of two kids, an eight-year-old girl, Aura, and a little five-year-old boy, Koa. And... We've been traveling through Latin America for almost three years. It'll be three years in September. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, my son actually is really connected with Aura, and I'm so grateful um, because they're at camp right now, which is why you don't <laughs> hear or see any children around. <laughs> they're at a, um, a biological reserve doing a day camp and I'm so grateful they have each other because my son and we don't think our kids will be into this camp yeah, it's a little little too much indoor time and um a little dry yeah <laughs> but they have each other and so we're we're happy for that yeah um so we've been talking like what should we talk about on live and I'm like everything we're talking about right now let's just <laughs> hop on there and chat and um I mean you've been out of the states um, Gabby's originally from the States, but she's not lived there really for 12 years. And that yeah. in and of itself is a story to tell. And what's so interesting when thinking about this as well is I left the States September 19th, um, 2010. And we left Australia, <laughs> where I have been living, September 19th, 2019. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, like, that time is really special and interesting which is also another topic we've been thinking about talking about which was like my conscious conception with our daughter Aura which happened to be around that same time as well mm. um so that those days like hold a lot of really like potent power for our families mm. but um yeah I left and I left um the United States in 2010 I'd last been living in Asheville North Carolina and I left on a one-way ticket to Costa Rica and I spent five months working on organic farms and hitchhiking around Costa Rica before um, heading to Panama and actually meeting my partner, um, Joel, on the border of Panama and Colombia. So we spent 10 months traveling from Colombia to Uruguay, working on farms, doing a lot of hitchhiking, doing a lot of camping, doing a lot of that young love kind of aspect, you know, that you do when you meet someone and you're just so enamored with them before we went back to Australia and um, yeah and kind of our journey as parenting started there mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful mm -hmm. um, one thing that we really connected over is we shared very similar experiences with your time in Byron Bay and having a really tight community that mm -hmm. was very focused on organic natural living and um, more like back to earth basics in terms of child rearing okay. and um, you know we we both were very involved in our communities and you know I love this story maybe you could share about how how your second child humbled you you know I only have one kid so I, I've had a number of miscarriages in the attempt to have a few but I, I and it was humbling as it was um, but I'd love for you to share that we were sharing the other day, you know, when I first had my daughter, Aura, I felt I had an amazing pregnancy. I felt so, like, in touch with my body. I felt the most beautiful I'd ever felt in my whole life. I was doing yoga four times a week. I was walking on the beach and in Australia. She was born in June, so all the whales were there, and they were all pregnant, heading up to Cairns to have their baby. So I was like, look at me. I'm like the whales. And had this, this incredible like pregnancy and birth and then postpartum with my daughter and 
you know, she was such an amazing baby <laughs> and toddler and all of these things that I felt really confident in my mothering and <laughs> another one of my beautiful soul sisters and I like were leading these um, workshops for moms like self-care for the new mother and this was a very buzzy word like I don't think self-care becomes such a buzzword then this was 2015 so you know it wasn't a it wasn't like a time where people were really like oh self-care self-care and we kind of felt like we coined the term self-care for the new mother <laughs> like we just felt so <laughs> embodied like yeah like in our mamahood and I just felt so put together you know and I just and later you know, I had my second baby and he was up every morning super early and I had been telling moms, you know, oh, if your baby wakes up at five, you know, just put out, you know, some soft toys or just try to breastfeed them at five and they should go back to sleep. And then I, of course, I had my second and he was up every day at five. There was nothing putting that kid back to sleep and I just felt so humbled in it. I felt like, <laughs> you know, I, that I had not like guilt or shame in telling people, women to take care of themselves, you know, as new mothers or any of that, but just that I felt so emboldened in what I was doing that, you know, that I'd kind of glossed over the harder aspects of what it looks like to mother, what it looks like when you don't have support in the community, when it looks like, you know, you've had a traumatic pregnancy birth or postpartum period, you know, the lack of a consistent partnership with your own partner. You know, I'd kind of glossed over all of those because those were all needs that I had had and had been met. So in the other side of it, it was, you know, let's buy a nice face wash. Let's, you know, like, let's let's put baby on us and we'll, we'll walk over with our feet in the sand. And, you know, having all of that will make sure that we have all that vitamin D and we'll feel fine instead of really getting to those core aspects. <laughs> I love how life does that to us, yeah. right? Life is like, oh, really, bitch? <laughs> you, you, you think you know what's up? I'm, I'm going to... Oh, for I'm going to sure. flip your whole world upside down <laughs> and give you all 2020. <laughs> yeah. But prior to 2020, we had actually exited mm. um, our lives in the States. And uh, you had a number of years before. And then my family, we left in 2019. <laughs> um, and, you know, we were just talking about um, the reasons for why we came mm. south. And... For me, I felt very overwhelmed in our lifestyle in Southern California. I, uh, we lived in a big suburban house. We had roommates. We had ongoing community events. We had this cooperative in the backyard, and I felt responsible for all of it. And it was overwhelming. Um, there was so much stuff to upkeep, and um, then there's just the, the, the daily to-do lists and tasks of being a mother to, to young child or children. Um, and I found I was prioritizing myself and what I needed to do so that I yeah. felt really seen, heard, seen myself, dancing, singing, um, writing, and, and those would always be at the bottom of my list. And it was just a, a pretty consistent state of el overwhelm that I found yeah. myself in. So when my partner was diagnosed with cancer, it was, okay, we need radical change. It's not working. Cancer gets you to kind of take that that view on life. Um, and so we we got out and we came to a place where we could actually have more mm. ease and grace. And um, obviously the climate and the weather is its own um, <laughs> nice uh, little cherry on top. But um, just the privileges and the access that comes with um, choosing a lifestyle south of the border. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's funny for us because it wasn't so much of a, a conscious choice that this was going to be a, a, like a longer aspect of our life. We actually packed up our home um, in Australia for five months time. <laughs> we packed up, I mean, I think I still, when we left, I mean, I still had a box of canned goods. I was like, these will keep for five months. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, we had been in a space where... I had really wanted to minimalize our life, you know, we, I was in the same kind of thing with, you know, house and trying to do a lot of different things and hold events and, you know, be involved in lots of different activities. And I realized that the core of all of that, like I really just craved that minimalism. Mm -hmm. My husband and I had lived in a van for two years with four children and 
I wanted to really get back to that space of, of not doing all these things without the clutter and that and that looked like a one room tiny home on my um, husband's father's property like outside of Sydney and McMaster's Beach and then I just kept wanting to strip it back further and further so I was like let's just go to Latin America for five months we'll go to Mexico Guatemala El Salvador we'll be back in time for kindergarten and you know at the time so many people were like how would you leave this community you know you your your mother-in-law runs you know an organic food delivery business you get organic food delivered to your house every week whenever you want you know you're co-facilitating a bushwalking or a hiking you know group for lung kids like how could you leave this lifestyle where it seems so put together and at the core of it I was like I just want more time I want more time with my kids I want more time with my husband who I'm really in love with I want more time to be together and to to take back some of that time and space that's just for us. Mm -hmm. So we left when Koa, my youngest, was two, and Aura was had just turned five. And I was still in a space where I was like, I just really want to just have that togetherness. I want to mm -hmm. have that time and to just be really together. And about a month and a half in, maybe less than that, I was like, what if we don't take our flight back? <laughs> what if we don't go back? Our flight was scheduled for February 1st, 2020. Mm. And, you know, it was it was kind of a scary decision, but it wasn't really because we knew and we trusted mm. how good we felt mm. having a different kind of lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. I love that you brought up that notion of time and having time. And that's been one of the most singular experiences in my engaging with local Ecuadorian people, mm -hmm. um, people here in Mexico, is that there's, there isn't a desire to hustle. People don't want the lifestyle that they see um, projected about the United States this like on the go constantly moving there's a desire here to really just be with and yeah. enjoy life and to sit on your stoop and watch mm -hmm. life go by that I have long appreciated and and so you know that's <laughs> that's why we find ourselves in connection yeah. <laughs> and living this lifestyle down here yeah yeah and it's been you know I mean I wouldn't say that there's all of these perfect pictures of what this looks like you know there's still different things come up and there's still lots of but in a way like I think that we trade one idea of what you know grounding or what the life that we think we look like should look like for another different one and sometimes that's you know can be a really easy seamless transition and Sometimes there's a lot of growing pain, so it's been a it's been a journey, you know, for three years of, yes, we have so much more time, and I'd so love that, and you know, we do these things, and we just move in the dance of it, which is, you know, sometimes works really well, and sometimes doesn't, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, and we're both taking a very unconventional approach to raising our children. Oh. So I, um, I resonate with the word unschooling, this idea that um, I really want to preserve what mm. I believe is we're all born with creative genius and I want to preserve oh. my child's innate desire and curiosity to learn about life and how things work. And I really feel that mo pretty much public education breeds that out of us. So I've been trying a few different things with um, world schooling. And he's been in various models, Waldorf, mm -hmm. um, an international school, the cooperative backyard experience we had at our home in Cardiff. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? It's the gas truck. <laughs> so if you need gas, that's the song you look for. <laughs> So I thought we could talk a little bit about just some of these different ideas for education and um, unschooling for me is just the idea mm. that um, I don't impose a lot of structure on my child. I'm more listening to what he's gravitating towards, what he's interested in, and that my role and my job is to provide resources, access, tools, um, people with greater mm. know-how than I have to those things. Yeah. And it's interesting, when we left, you know, I had thought, okay, the right way is for us to do, you know, Steiner education, Waldorf, you know, and it needs to look like this, and it has to look like this, and then 
all of a sudden when I think that we decided to stay in Latin America, we were on El Salvador at the time, I was like, actually, what does this look like? If my, if I don't put my kid into school, mm -hmm. then is all this responsibility on me? Right. Like, yeah. am I, you know, the one that's holding all of these cards? And And later and through, you know, being in this lifestyle for so long, I'm like, wow, these kids have so much desire and so much passion to kind of go in the direction that they want to go in that, you know, it's been amazing to witness. And it's been amazing to kind of figure out what that school looks like as well, because we've put in, we've had kids in, you know, alternative outdoor schooling on the coast of Oaxaca. We were just in Panama on the Caribbean islands of Bocas del Toro in a French, um, Spanish, English school that was more formal, I would say. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, they're surrounded by howler monkeys and mm -hmm. it was a different kind of lifestyle. But at the core of it, yeah, you're right. I've seen so much of my children and what they desire and what they're going through that it's been amazing to kind of witness that and look at how that looks for them in terms of what they really want to do. It's been less of like, this is, okay, you're Steiner, you're Waldorf now, and this is what it looks like all the time. Instead, it's been like, yeah, what are your passions? What what do you want to explore? What can we explore together? And last year, we were on a road trip in the United States um, for five months. And, and we took that time to really look at, you know, the Native American population in California, Oregon, and Washington. And... Uh, it started by us going, looking at different, you know, mountains or different rivers and being like, hmm, Dead Horse Mountain, that just doesn't sound like a Native American name. And, you know, by the time we got to North Cascades, my daughter at the time, who was seven, was in the visitor center and she was like, what are these mountains really called? And, you know, it just, it went from us all wanting to do this road trip and for us to explore and to, you know, be in the trees and do all these things to a deeper understanding of what the history of the United States looks like or, you know, Mexico, so many different places. And, you know, to be able to all have that educational pursuits together is something amazing too. You know, I learned so much last year by them wanting to know different things as well. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I still get to have this re-education myself, mm. which has been mm. amazing as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for a lot of our word schooling, so we um, we did about seven months in the van, out of the van in 2020. We did a tour up the West Coast Pacific Northwest. <laughs> that was our first tour. Our second Mama Caravan tour was across the Southwest into the South and up to New Jersey. I needed to see my mother-in-law for Thanksgiving, even though all the news media was saying don't kill grandma at Thanksgiving <laughs> that year. Um, and then last summer we did an upper north um, USA National Parks trip mm. and definitely um, for me it was very much about healing <laughs> we're healing from the loss of my life partner and my my son's father and just that ample time spent in nature to just be and to play together and connect and uh, become this new two-person entity when we had been so used to being the three of us um, so I didn't f focus and our road schooling journey for me that is that's the classroom that is the teacher mm. everything I'm sharing there I, I, I don't put this pressure on myself that mm. we have to learn this or that or you know like we're gonna we're just gonna learn because that's yeah. life life <laughs> teaches us what we need to learn and we don't need to set out with any like preconceived ideas of what we're supposed to learn mm. I, I just find that that feels like a lot of pressure and i'll find, mm. find myself feeling overwhelmed again and so just really allowing ourselves to be in like what's here and what do we want to explore and um I mean, certainly we talk quite a bit about indigenous people. And I remember being at a park in Montana, Missoula. And we it was, you know, it was such a strange place. And then he saw these pictures on the wall in this museum. It was a park museum. And he's like, Mom, why, why did the brown men, why did their faces look like that? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how would you feel 
if your land had been taken and your people, your children had been taken away from you, how do you think mm. you'd feel? Um, so the road just, and life and the world, it just offers us opportunities to be present and to expand and grow. And, and that's what I love about it, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, and I just know who I am. If I if I make any markers of how it's supposed to be or what it's supposed to look like, I just know myself. I'm I'm not going to necessarily succeed. So I rather set myself up <laughs> for success versus failure and just like we're always learning. That's that, mm. that's never that's never really um like at cost and consequence, you know, mm. because life is our greatest teacher. So yeah and it's amazing like i think that when children have the opportunity to kind of see all those big picture things and it's not you know them sitting down doing worksheet and learning about it but they're really fully embodying and experiencing it it comes off differently you know mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. as well like since we've been in latin america you know we took some time to go to lots of different like mayan ruins and we mm -hmm. were in tikal and it's not part of Guatemala. We had left Palenque, so here in Chiapas, and we had taken three colectivos <laughs> um, to Guatemala, and we had crossed the border. Um, Which is a shared van. A colectivo yes. is a shared van. <laughs> you pay very inexpensive rate to move you around the city or in between the, the bigger towns. Yes, and we had actually were thinking about taking a more private shuttle, but we were traveling with two surfboards at the time and they wouldn't allow us on the shuttle. Yeah. So we needed to break up our journey into these, yes, smaller vans and some of them were buses. And um, and as we were going to Guatemala, actually on a side note, um, I was really reflecting on how much children are appreciated in Latin America, which mm. is a different aspect of traveling as well that I hadn't thought about or hadn't known what really what that would look like. but. You know, just the respect that they had for children. So we'd been on a bus all morning. We were on our last leg. And, you know, my kids at that point were a little bit cranky. You know, my son is two. We've been traveling, doing all these things. And a 20-year-old or 18-year-old young man sits down beside us. And I was thinking to myself, oh, like, he's going to get a bit annoyed with me. Like, this kid, you know, he's two. He's going to probably start crying. It's going to look like this. And... He just opened up his bag and opened up a packet of cookies and just shared it with Koa. He just sat there like children are just so normalized and so respected that it wasn't like, oh, I'm sitting next to a toddler for the next four hours on a bus and like this is really, you know, not something I'm excited about. It was like, oh, I'm sitting next to a toddler and I also have cookies. How good is this going to be? And it was such a beautiful and potent reminder of like, the respect that we can give children, you know? And so we ended up going to Tikal. And, um, you know, I was like, what is this going to look like with children? What is what is going to ruins look like for small kids, you know? How does that look? And I realized on that trip, I was like, if we take it slow, if we bring a blanket, if we bring things to color with, then we can lay in the grass all day. We don't have to push. We don't have to hike to every site we don't need to be there at sunrise like we can actually just lay in the grass underneath the tree for an hour and just look up at this temple of the jaguar and and not be on a rush tour not be living this life in a way that's just like push 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 but we just laid there with the kids and i'm pretty sure that my littlest one like had a nap just underneath the temple and we just just took our time to really soak it in and to really just be there and and it's funny because the kids still talk about that and mm. they still talk about, you know, what it was like to be there and yeah, and realizing that you can do these things but do them slowly has been such an important mm. gift for us as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that mm. slow, slow. Yep. Yeah. I like to say I turtle turtles one of my <laughs> animal medicine keepers. Yeah. Um also I Another thing I really appreciate about being south of the border, specifically here in Mexico, Mexico, and taking the colectivos, these shared vans where you get on, you get off. Um, it's 
pretty much expected that you greet everyone around you. The yes. buen dia, buenos tardes, hasta luego. You're talking to the people around you, even if it's just a cordial good morning, good afternoon, thank you. And what I also notice is that the children and the elders are helped on and off. Mm -hmm. If you have heavy bags, someone helps you with your bags. The people are quick to jump up to give other people seats, elders, women with children. And it just really, um, it just really nurtures and nourishes my spirit and this deep desire oh. and deep DNA call for mm -hmm. community. Um, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah, if y'all want to come down to uh, <laughs> to Mexico, south of the border, actually, somebody somebody is hosting a pop up, a world school pop up next month. Tell us about it. Yes. So, oh, and I love that you said that about the colectivos and yeah. about you know, it was the first thing actually my husband noticed when we were back in the states after being in Latin America in Mexico for like a year and a half. He was like, you walk down the street, and nobody says good afternoon, or you know, it's just. It's just so expected to get in and say things, and yeah, it's so beautiful. And I remember that from the boats at Lake Atitlan as well in Guatemala. You know, the kids are handed down into the boat and handed up out of the boat, and it's just such a beautiful experience. I've never felt as respected as I have as being a mother in Latin America. Mm. You know, like mm. everyone really looks at you with a lot of respect. It's really beautiful. Mm. So I'm co-facilitating a world school pop-up in San Miguel de Allende, Guanajuato. Um, San Miguel's kind of become like a an expat kind of hub, I guess you could say. Expat but, is a term like for yeah. people who fled living in the United States, which really is so, is being an immigrant. Yes. Yeah, so. um, but there's a cushy term. We say we're expat. Patriots for those yes. of us who have willingly left versus, you know. Really, we're, yeah, we're immigrants. But yeah. I would say that San Miguel de Allende has been a retirement community for a long time. And I, I was actually there working on an organic farm in 2008. And um, it's grown a lot since then, but I think that it really still holds that beautiful mm. Mexican charm, you know. Mexico is such an amazingly diverse place because... Um, you know, some places where there might be, oh, it's very Americanized or different aspects is that Mexico really holds its own. You still find taquerias everywhere. You still mm -hmm. find this beautiful culture of Mexicans traveling, <laughs> you know, in their own country. That's your Mexican culture. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's very rich. It's very, very, very rich. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we're going to be, we'll be there um, with another family and we're really just hoping to see other families that want to come there's no real set activities there's not a lot of structure it's just holding a container for other families to come and having each individual family kind of create the initiative to you know hold space for others whether it be park plays or dinners or you know some families might say oh I really want to do this excursion it looks like this and some families are really keen to spend the money and do that and other families aren't and I think that you know, coming together in a more organically formed group mm -hmm. instead of one person taking the power to be like, I'm organizing it, this is all what we're doing, and instead kind of all coming together collectively to share that space and to world school our children and to have an immersive experience in Mexico is kind of what we're looking at. And so, yeah, that'll be the whole month of September. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, I want to visit San Miguel, Guanajuato, San Miguel de Allende, and I would love, I've been wanting to be a part of a world school pop-up for a while now since we first stayed at Anahata, which mm. we also have that in common, <laughs> um, which is a world schooling community here in, more in the Yucatan, or Quintana Roo. Um, so, yeah, if anyone is interested, I'll put in the comments more, um, I'll share more about the pop-up. Um, and I, yeah, I hope to join in yeah. the future. We'll be back in the States at that time, but you never know at the end of September. So we just yeah. wanted to share all that. And, um, it's always nice to hear from mamas who are on the ground doing it. And yeah. I know it can feel scary. Um, one to admit that maybe our lifestyle isn't working. Mm. Um, it can be scary to be super real with our feelings. For me, when I got really real, radically real about how I was really feeling, um, I, 
a word that was real for me was miserable. I was pretty miserable mm. um, many years ago. And um, it's, you know, it's challenging to admit to that to ourselves. And we wanted to share just to, to demonstrate that there are other things we can do that can support ourselves and our systems. And then we'll, we meet each other along the way. So we're not alone on this journey and we're not isolated, even though it can feel that way, especially now, post-2020. So we just thought we'd share. Thank you for joining us. Um, look for more information in the comment section. And hopefully this will reach you. Whoever needs to hear this, have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. I'm Thank so you. you Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Gabby. <laughs> yeah, so nice to, to make a, a kindred mama-sister friend on the road and yeah. just to to two ships passing the night because they'll be yeah. on their way and we're here and who knows yeah. what the future will bring yeah it's so nice to lay the groundwork for lots of traveling families and connections later on and yeah yeah, yeah. thanks so much yeah <laughs> all right bye everybody bye oh, cool so it's not going on here we go nope how do I turn it on? Maybe the X? Hi.